okay so in the last session we just created journal and we inquired the balances and after creating the journal we posted if you don't post the journal the balances cannot be updated in the system against the accounts against you against which account you are entering the amounts those amounts won't reflect for those same accounts for that reason it's a mandatory we have to post the journal so after that we discussed about multi-org structure so whatever you could see here this would be the standard multi-org structure so in the top level we will have a business group busy we call and primary ledger under primary ledger will have a legal entity under legal entity operating in it under operating it will have a inventory organizations how many we can have that completely depends on how they are operating the business and where they are operating the business okay there are many points to be considered we discussed to decide number of business rules you have to look at how many country in how many countries they are operating the business for each country we will go with one business group with the help of business group you can maintain the employees information and primary ledger minimum one primary ledger for each country so you can have more than one primary ledger also in the same country for that we take in the simple example here as there may be multiple businesses the company might be doing in that case so based on the i mean vertical of business okay based on the vertical based on the different businesses how they are operating so what are the information they want to capture depending on that they may have a requirement of segments so that segments when you say segments those can be managed with a chart of accounts if company has a different chart of accounts for different businesses that will result to have a multiple primary ledgers within one country also and when you talk about legal entities for each registration we have to go with one legal entity and uh, operating units how they are operating their business how many branches they have okay in our, how many locations they are running depending on these parameters we can decide the operating units when you talk about primary ledger this, that is the one which we can use to record the business transaction legal entity every transaction should be tracked with the legal entity specification so that based on that information the legal reporting takes place operating in it the actual transaction the actual business transactions with more segregation and security and data control we can record with the help of operating in it only and warehouse management you can manage with the concept called as inventory organization which we call as IO okay so if you have a five just here we uh, taken the example if you have five warehouses in the system in our Oracle application we have to create six inventory organizations the five are real inventory organizations which you see in the business you have to create one additional inventory organization which we call as virtual inventory and finally we have to create six why we have to go with one additional inventory organization how that would be helping in the system process we'll be discussing once we get into inventory organization creation okay so these are the few points we have to understand and <clears throat> one more point here so just the short names we have as a bz pl le ou and inventory organization fine so now the same i just taken here so what which level which level which applications can be managed we have many applications which we discussed as a part of p2p and o2c cycle apart from that there are many other applications we have close to 300 applications from oracle so we'll talk about few applications which level which application can be mapped when you talk about bz what is the purpose of bz why we have to what is the purpose of bz we'll have as a part of multi -arc structure to make manage it, the people my uh, information stored in recording ledger yes to maintain the employees information to maintain the employees information we have an application called as hrms hrms we have hrms application by using HRMS application, we can maintain the employee's information. 
with the help of hrms application when we are going to maintain the employees information as per multi org structure okay you have to maintain that hrms application at bz level okay we'll maintain the hrms application at bz level as per multi org structure that means we'll create the bz through that bz we'll be utilizing hrms application to maintain the employee information finally you can say with the help of business group you can maintain the employees information by using which application hrms the same way when you talk about primary ledger where we created primary ledger we already created primary ledger where we created here in gl so the primary ledger the general ledger application will be maintained as per multi org at primary ledger level okay the general ledger application will be managed at primary ledger level along with that will be maintaining fa also in financial applications we have fixed assets so the primary ledger level as per multi org structure so under bz we will get primary ledger the primary ledger level only we can maintain general ledger application as well as fa fixed assets as per multi org structure primary ledger level which modules can be mapped or can be managed okay the modules are general ledger and fixed assets and legal entity level the le level what modules we can manage so the legal entry level you can manage cm cash management or say c cash entry system both are same you can call as cm or c cash management application the operating unit level most of the applications will be managed at operating unit level okay ap er po om and many other applications okay many other applications can be managed at ou level so the actual real business transactions will be recording within okay these apr poom based on the respective department related activities those all the applications will be maintaining ou specific okay ou specific say you have an operating unit in hyderabad in oper hyderabad you'll have a definitely payables department you may have a receivables department you may have a purchasing department you may have a order management department sales department so what are the departments you have in hyderabad operating net for each department will have a specific application so that means in particular operating unit level you are going to perform all these key business transactions which may fall into different cycles it could be p2p or o2c so the, all these applications apr po om these applications will maintain at ou level and coming to inventory organization level will maintain the inventory inv inventory application so we have some other manufacturing applications also called as bomb vip there are many other applications bomb means bills of material okay bills of material and vip means work in process so these are the some manufacturing applications this you can ignore from our understanding not required okay just to take simple example as inventory application can be managed at inventory organization level so this is a standard multi org structure okay when you look at the multi org structure other side when you look at our applications which we are going to use in the system process so those applications will be standing or those applications will be mapped at what level so these are the levels just try to remember these points don't try to understand more detail level we cannot understand now once we get into the application once you start working on the process whatever the point we are discussing now will be able to connect okay for now even if you don't get meaning here just try to remember try to remember bz level hrms primary ledger level gl and fa and le level cash management <coughs> ou level apr po om and inventory organization level inventory and other applications we have as a bomb and vip applications also okay this is how just uh, we can map different applications the different levels when you consider multi org structure okay fine now the point is now the point is what level you can generate the reports 
anyone please tell me what level you can generate the reports by looking at multi org structure but not by looking at applications what levels what level for you exactly that is you yes correct so that is a place where you will be performing the real business transactions so you have a 10 branches for 10 branches you can have 10 operating nets branch wise you have to prepare the reporting branch wise will be performing the business transactions so the reporting the financial reports will be creating OU level so whatever the OU level means these are the modules already discussed as a part of P2P and OT cycles will record the transactions and subledger applications means other than GL all applications are subledger all those applications will be transferring to which application all those applications transaction data will be transferring to which application general ledger general ledger general ledger, general ledger. so which data we are transferring to general ledger OU specific data say you are using AP AP will be maintained at OU level that means when you are recording the transfers in account in accounts payables you have to represent specific OU the purchase invoices belongs to which OU the payment is belongs to which OU or else the sales invoices belongs to which OU and the customer payment the receipt is belongs to which OU the purchase orders belongs to which OU the receipt is belongs to which OU the sales orders belongs to which OU that's how with the specification you will be creating the transaction at OU level finally all the information from these different applications will be sending to GL when you are sending to GL so within the GL the data complete data will be holded by primary ledger okay so we discussed earlier by using the GL we can prepare the financial reports yes the place is GL within the GL we can create the financial reports but the actual data we are getting from subledger application the data can be created and maintained okay OU specific okay when you send the data to GL the data you can see OU specific only so with that that is the meaning what we are trying to understand the OU level you can prepare the reports the OU specific data I'll record the transaction for OU1 one purchase invoice or say purchase invoice for OU1 and two purchase invoice for OU2 these two I'll be sending to GL in GL you could see for invoice for OU1 and OU2 not exactly with the operating it name there will be some other representation that will be understanding so the point here is what level we prepare the financial reports means OU level but where we prepare the place is general ledger so OU specific data will be sending to general ledger within the general ledger application will be preparing the reports this is the point we have to understand okay so why these are all the applications are mapped in the different levels going forward we'll understand once we get into the process so you just you will be able to connect to these points for now just remember these points don't try to understand okay because we have to see the reality then only you can understand what exactly we are trying to understand here okay so just remember these points what level which application okay very soon will get a clarification on this point by seeing the reality in the system process so any questions here please fine so this is how just you can manage uh, multi arc structure okay now we'll go with the simple example say for example we'll take case as say client is doing the business in india and taking the country businesses in india client is operating the business in india and say within india they are running three businesses okay three businesses they're running and <coughs> And for each business, they have a separate registration. That means three LEs they have. And say they have, they're running the business in the five locations. And they have, say, 
six inventories warehouses okay client is running the business in india we'll, we'll go with this simple example they are doing the three different type of businesses and for each business they have a separate registration that means three legal entities they have three separate registration with three legal entities and uh, i'll write as a registrations three businesses and three separate registrations how many locations they are running the business say five locations and six inventories they have okay so based on this you tell me how many bgs we required primary ledgers required le's and ous and inventory organizations any one please tell me any one i don't need uh, some common answer just any one who got clarity on this concept they can just answer to this question one business group why uh, we are running that business in india so that's why okay only business we were client one business group yeah so one business group would be enough okay yes why and i mean the one prime one second why should not we go with the two business groups if different kinds of businesses he uh, running in india so we will uh, uh, take it no not required that is the point okay so the point is in one country Correct. Yeah. one currency so, only one currency and payroll statutory process also will be same yes, sir correct so, these will be common there won't be any need of going with a different it's not depending yes, on how many businesses we are doing okay how many countries we are doing that is the element okay within one country everything yes. remains same the uh, payroll statutory process or currency that would be same so there won't be any need no need to go with there is no element which can makes the difference to go with more than one yeah fine so one bg because one country within one country there won't be any need there won't be any requirement to go with a multiple business groups fine yeah they are doing three businesses then please go ahead look at the multi primary ledger explain based on that the, tell me the possibilities sorry no just look at the multi org structure and take this information just give me the possibilities how many and why okay bz primary one. ledger depend no 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 just oh, i i request that okay. it, it should not be some common answer i think somebody is just uh, explaining i think jay prakash you can go ahead with that your answer jay prakash or somebody please yeah one bz enough for this business okay and uh, uh, 3pl primary ledger three businesses Yes. My question is why three primary ledgers are required? Uh, because different be uh, businesses we are doing, so that uh, that's why. Different businesses. In how many countries they are doing? India only, one country. Do you require three primary ledgers? No. If uh, it is clarification purpose, we will prepare like that. No, no, no. Clarification purpose not. I am asking no. the possibilities. What are the chances? One prime. Okay, one primary ledger is enough. Mm hmm. And uh, three legal entities, five operating units. Oh, one second, one second. Here you should come up with the uh, your understanding. So three businesses are doing. You can say simple point. If the three businesses are going to use same chart of accounts, one primary ledger. If three businesses yes. are going to use different chart of accounts, three. primary ledgers primary ledgers if two businesses are going to use same chart of account and one business is going one to use different then one is enough yeah, come on here just i'm just giving the clear point if two businesses are going to use one chart of account and one business is going to use different chart of account then how many chart of accounts total two two that means two primary ledgers okay yes. so everything will be decided yes. based on how they are going to manage so now the here the possibilities are it could be one if it consider three businesses are going to use same chart of account 
and uh, you can have a three primary ledgers if every business is going to have a different chart of account and you can have a two primary ledgers if any out of these three any two business businesses are going to use same and another business is going to have a different chart of accounts in that case two okay. primary ledgers done okay fine the third okay. point three registrations three legal entities that's it there is no other point to discuss and understand okay just simple okay. point three registrations in case of three, three legal go with the three legal that's it each registration will maintain as a separate legal entity the file location yes five operating units five operating units okay here i'll just bring one more additional point that 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 statement is correct five locations Five operating, five operating units. units. Why for five locations, five operating units we require? Please answer to that. Branch wise, branch wise we want to check it, so that's why we'll create five operating units. Branch wise, uh, we want to see that the report, so that's why. Branch wise, we want to. We will create five. Your statement is correct. The point here is, as we discussed, the branch wise, or say location wise, you want to maintain the data separately. That is also very important point which yes. you have to include. Branch wise, you have to maintain the data separately. Even by creating one operating unit also, you can maintain the file locations data. Possible. But you want to maintain separately. That is a very important point. So location wise, the business transactions, you want to maintain separately and you have to keep security between that transactions which you are, which you are performing across those file locations and the locations wise you want to generate the reports these are very important points you want to maintain the data separately for file locations and you want to prepare the reports separately for file locations and you want to have a security you don't want to allow one location business people to see another location business data these three points just very important just consider now i'll come up with some different example okay your statement is correct. That's what we discussed. If you don't mind, you can mute from your end, everyone. We could hear some noise sometimes. Even who are answering also, once you're done from your end, just with your answer, when I start talking about something, meantime, you can keep on mute and you can unmute and you can start speaking or you can start answering or you can raise your questions. Please take as a request. Fine. <clears throat> done. Now, the point is, yes, five locations, yes, five operating net. Okay. Even if you have a five locations, you may not require five operating nets. That completely depends on business. Say, for example, the five locations I'm going to take Hyderabad, Bangalore, Delhi, okay, Pune, and Mumbai. So say a client is operating the business in these five locations. Now, if client is going to say, this five locations what are the business we are doing we want to maintain the data separately and we want to have a security for the data separately and we want to prepare the reports separately where we can will be able to track the expense and the revenues and finally the profitability in that scenario we'll go with the five locations each location one separate operating unit now say client is saying Yes, we are running the business in five locations, but reality what we do is we never bother about, okay, how much business we are doing in Hyderabad and Bangalore. The Hyderabad and Bangalore business will be treating as a only one operation. We don't want to maintain any data separately what transactions are taking place in Hyderabad and what transactions, what business transactions are resulting in Bangalore. The Hyderabad and Bangalore will be treating us as a common entity of the business. We'll be treating common. We don't want to prepare the reports separately for Hyderabad and Bangalore. Always what we do is we'll be clubbing Hyderabad and Bangalore business and even we'll be spending the expense commonly and we'll be finding the revenue uh, commonly and again we, uh, we we don't have any requirement of finding about the profitability or expense the Hyderabad and Bangalore separately if that is a requirement so what point will decide to go with the separate operating net 
those points they are going to ignore here. Data segregation is required between Hyderabad and Bangalore? No. Data security is required? No. Reporting is required separately? No. In that case, you can create for Hyderabad and Bangalore one operating net only. So if Hyderabad or Bangalore business are going to record any transaction, they will be selecting the same business unit. Sorry, operating unit. Okay. Operating unit. You may create as HYD BAN operating unit. You may name like this. So you are not going to maintain the data separately even you are running the business even you are doing the business operations in the different locations so this is how you can decide okay whether you have to go with separate operating rate for each location or one operating rate for this different okay this is how you can do again by going with one operating rate for Hyderabad and Bangalore still there is a possibility to date maintain the data separately that I'll be explaining for now take this point okay you can take as this additional point if you have five locations for each location by default normally the normal best practice every company follows is they'll go with the five operating nets but there is a possibility if they don't have any requirement of segregating the data and preparing the report separately and if they don't need data security, they can go with one operating net for two or multiple locations business also. Okay, this is another point. Done. That's all about operating net. So how many inventory organizations we have to create in the system? How many inventory organizations? Seven. Six plus one. Six plus one. Plus one. So six are physical inventories. That means real inventories which you can go and see in their business six warehouses they have six inventories we have to create and mm -hmm. along with that you have to create one more inventory virtual which is virtual which is required in the system process not in the real business okay the virtual one is required in the system process why you will be understanding okay so these are the few points to understand okay fine done now if you take this case just will just take the information into some simple flow diagram here so here you can say how many business groups you require only one business group okay say one business group one second one business group under that business group how many registrations they have three registrations so three legal entities required and before that legal entities so there is a possibility they can have only one primary ledger or three but ideally it would be one only most of the companies you can see if you go with a multiple primary ledgers there will be a big task for them in terms of opening and closing the periods and sharing the data between those ledgers the general practice would be in one country will go with one primary ledger until unless there is strong requirement of maintaining the separate chart of accounts for each and every business so under business scope we are going to have one primary ledger i'll be writing the names a bit later just let me put this there's some skeleton information okay so treat this is a business group this is going to be primary ledger under the primary ledger how many legal entities we are going to have three registrations three legal entities so now here you have to keep three small boxes okay so one okay so say so one more legal entity and third legal entity we'll just finally take into the flow diagram here find done 
so three registrations yes we take it they are operating the business in five locations when they are operating the business in five locations these five locations business will falls under specific legal entity right say by following the first registration they are doing the business in hyderabad and bangalore so this is the first registration first legal entity under that so they will be doing so they have a two operating units So, say two operating units, and total five operating units, two under one primary one LE, and under second registration, say they are doing the business only in Delhi. So, if you are for a Delhi, I'll create here just one box to specify that as a Delhi operating unit. And say with the third registration, they are running the business in Pune and Mumbai. I'll just put two small boxes for two operating units. Done. Now, how many inventory organizations they have? Six. So the six will be specifying here, but reality will be creating one more that is a virtual. The virtual one we don't maintain under any operating unit. That would be virtual for system process, but the reality, how many you have, those will be representing under specific operating unit. Here we got total five operating units. Say to support this first operating unit, we'll write the names. Just let's wait for some time to support these five. We let's treat as operating units to support these five operating unit. Uh, these five operating units. So we have a five six inventory organization. You can take the point as to support. This operating unit we have one inventory organization. Okay, we have one inventory organization to support this operating unit. We have one inventory organization, and to support this operating unit, say you have a two in <coughs> sorry, two inventory organizations. Okay, total already we just we specified four of inventory organizations total we have six and to support and say for this operating unit no inventory to support this fifth operating unit we have two inventories total of six we have now for this operating unit no inventory we'll just write the names and we'll address the hierarchy we'll see how that this scenario, this case looks like as a multi-arc structure. So the busy business group. So here you can you can write the names here. I'll say this is going to be say ERP3 India Business Group. Okay, we are Petri India Business Group. Fine. Under that business group, you have one primary ledger. So you have just one primary ledger. Under business group, we have a primary ledger so that you can write here. The primary ledger name is ERP3 India Primary Ledger. Okay. Under that primary ledger, you have three legal entities. You have a three legal entities. Fine. So that I'll just represent here. So reality when you do the when you are doing implementation, we'll be doing this kind of designing by using MS Visio. Microsoft Visio will do this. When you are just simple understanding, let's go with this kind of representation. So now three legal entities. So 
there are three businesses just i'll write the name as le1 le2 le3 simple for three businesses three le's okay i'll say le1 le2 reality will be giving the exact name what name you have a registration but here simply just i'm mentioning with a number done so under first legal entity we have two operating units okay under first legal entity we have two operating units so here i'll say under this legal entity okay we have two operating units so it's say it's a ou1 or you can write exact name since we have this very small box representation i'll say ou1 that you can say hyderabad hyderabad ou and bangalore ou so just say hyderabad ou and say bangalore for you operating net and under le2 you have only one operating net okay just say you have only one operating net that is say here as we discussed so delhi operating net and you have le3 under le3 with this registrations you are running the business in two locations so those are pune and mumbai so that you can represent here so under this registration we got two operating units we are running the two business in two different locations which we are treating as two operating units so those names you can take here or pune pune operating unit and this is going to be mumbai mumbai operating unit so for hyderabad operating unit we have say only one inventory automation so for hyderabad under hyderabad operating unit to support hyderabad business operations we have only one warehouse so that you can call as hyd inventory and to support bangalore also say we have only one warehouse you can have a number of but we are taking this simple case so you have a bangalore inv fine and for delhi for one operating unit you have a two warehouses okay for one operating unit you can have multiple inventory operations so that you can represent here under delhi operating unit okay under delhi operating unit we have two warehouses those you can say delhi i and v1 okay can say delhi i and v1 and the other one you can say for delhi i and v2 and for this pune you don't have any inventory no when you say no no inventory because that operating net may be involving only services if you are doing the some sort of services okay there we don't need any inventory just when you are dealing with the product then only we need inventory so in case of the operating net is going to provide some services so we don't need any operating unit, inventory operation take example so you are you are doing your business operations in pune purely you are providing some consulting services 
you are just you have a resource and you will be outsourcing that's it you you are not dealing with any products so in that case you don't find any inventory you don't require any inventory but in the system point of view even if you don't have inventory you have to create inventory that in this case will be creating the dummy one no inventory you can create the dummy inventory just to specify as per system process you should specify for each and every operating net is connected with which inventory organization it's a mandatory for every inventory operating net inventory organization is mandatory you have to specify reality if you don't have any inventory for a specific operating net at least you should create the dummy inventory to specify there is no inventory for specific operating net and if you take mumbai here so to support this mumbai business operations so you have two inventories okay we have a two inventory organizations and those you can just name as so mumbai inv1 and uh, mumbai inv2 okay this is how just you can simply represent so based on that example this is how the multi org structure looks like okay here even if you look at this data is classified data is segregated all the levels okay so here i'll say this is sorry okay this is a business unit where we'll maintain the employee information then this this talks about ledgers whatever ledgers we have one or multiple all will be maintained separately this is another layer of data and this is your legal entities data which will be maintained separately and this is your operating units data and this is your warehouse management related data and again <coughs> so these are the different classifications of data we have and uh, complete information maintained and se segregated and maintained separately now we take an example for india in the same way if you are going to if client is going to run the business in 10 countries for each country by looking at how they are running the business how many ledgers they require how many legal entities they require in the specific country and how many operating units they have under specific registration and under particular operating it how many inventory organizations we have this is how we'll be creating okay this is just for india in the same way say client is running the business in five countries in that case this is the same way we'll be creating the five invent multi org structures five multi org structures so even client is running the business in five multi in the five countries the five countries related multi or five structures we can create in the single instance okay you are not going to maintain the software country wise software will be one okay here the software is going to be one <clears throat> so you'll be creating okay you'll be creating multi org structure for different countries say for example this is for india so this is the india multi org structure we'll create here and say for us whatever required will be creating in the same instance same instance okay and say we are running the business in UAE and they are running the business in Singapore for Singapore you will create separate multi org structure and they are running the business in say UK so in the five countries they are running the business so this is a multi org structure say just for understanding i'm giving so this is for india india multi org structure this is for usa 
So this multi order structure for UK. This is for UAE. This is for okay Singapore. So client is running the business in five countries, but they no need to maintain the software separately for each and every country. They can take the license from Oracle that they can install and they can maintain the servers in one location. Say for example, they are going to maintain the servers in specific country. Okay, take example, they are going to maintain the servers in India. Okay, they'll maintain the server in India. They'll maintain the servers in India. Okay, within that server. So they'll be having this software and they'll be creating everything. And the server will be located in one location. And within that server, whatever the software we have as instance, within that we'll have a different multi-org structures. And from US, okay, the people who are in the US, they'll be axing. Okay, the people who are in USA and the people who are in India, the people who are in UK and UAE and say Singapore. So where this instance we are going to place, say India only. This is going to be server location is so for example India. So the server we have in India and within the server we have this instance within the same instance we will be creating the multi org structure for each and every country and the, when US people are going to use the system they will be connecting to the same instance from respective country okay they will be connecting they will be connecting to their country specific multi org structure related data only okay UK guys will be connecting to same instance but they they will be connecting to the instance within the instance what are the multi org structure is created for that country business and the UAE people will connect to only that UAE multi org structure Singapore business will connect to Singapore multi org structure India people will connect to India multi org structure and between the see even if you are even instance is one okay you are able to utilize that instance for multiple business multiple countries business with by segregating the data the India instance is same but for India multi org whatever the data you have that cannot be accessed by any other country okay in the same way within the same multi org what are the levels you have if you take example of this India multi org structure within this India multi org structure so this data will be segregated business group wise primary ledgers wise legal entity wise operating net wise and inventory organization wise the same way so data will be segregated okay data will be segregated Okay, data will be segregated here. You can just so it's operating it wise also. So what are the data you have? Okay, so what are the data you have within Hyderabad operating unit? The data cannot be accessed by Bangalore. Data will be maintained separately. Not only multi org structure level security within that operating unit operating device also will have a data security everything is going to be in one instance but we are going to have a enough security so everything is secured everything secured this inventory data cannot be accessed by or viewed by other inventory okay this is how data will be the data will be secured from one to other that means within one instance if you are going to create multiple multi org structures between the structures there will be data security and within the structure okay 
there will be data security between the legal entities between the operating net between the inventory organizations and all the data since instance is one okay will be stored in one database for one instance we have only one database okay database is going to be one all these five countries multi org structures we are going to create in one instance the total data will be stored in one database only but logical segregation will be maintained with the very high security that is the greatness of multi org structure okay so for multiple countries business you can map into single instance and all the data can be stored in the single database but still security can be maintained okay country specific again within the country what are the multi org structure we have within the structure what are the classifications we have the legal entities level there will be data security between the operating unit there will be data security again say for example within this operating unit we have a applications called as apr between ap and ar applications there will be data security when we are accessing those applications responsible level there will be security user level there will be security all the levels will have a great security when you go with this multi org structure and now say for example you want to transfer the data from india to us you want to transfer the data from india to us sorry you want to transfer the data from india to us or else say uae to uk want to transfer the data from uae to uk yes you can do since these two multi org structures are available in the same instance if you are using separate instances for uae and usa it would be very challenging task since these multi org structures are going to be in the one environment one instance it would be easy to move the data from uae to usa depending on the requirement that sim that related concepts also will be discussing at the time of consolidation we'll talk about those points but this is what we have to understand when we talk about multi org structure this is the advantage where multiple countries business you can map into the system as a multi org structure different each country what are the structures you are going to create all you can create in the single instance with a more security okay So any questions here please Any questions here to understand all, uh, uh, all we do this implementation uh, as per uh, our client uh, requirement or like uh, what they advise us ki we'll do like uh, we have a, a business unit uh, like uh, locations so we will bifurcate like that yes but the point is we don't advise we will be advising as a consultant we'll understand their business we will advise that's how we'll finalize the solution so uh, basically all these are running means it's like one year old or five year old or six month old all data are already there hmm So you tell me what is uh, means, your point? Already is data is there means what? What, what is your question? Uh, my like uh, data migration things is there for like they want they have some data also because uh, yes, yes, business yes, is running. They have uh, all money finance. One second, yeah. So now any implementation you do before they move to this Oracle application or any other ERP, they'll be using some systems. So what we'll do is. how they are running the business based on that will create the multi org structure what are the data we have in their previous system that also will be moving here that job will be done by technical people what we call how it happens will be discussing as a part of real time fine don't include that point ignore it as of now just try to understand uh, this element uh, like how that uh, i mean uh, how the i mean uh, within the single instance we can maintain the different country related multi org structures with more security so when you say multi org structure within that the complete the country business related data will be maintained yeah okay yeah any other questions here please Lakshman, uh, in the above, above bifurcation that you did for ERP three India Business Group, 
Okay. Uh, you did not uh, depict the virtual organization. Where does that go? That's what you don't need to include here. That's not required. Which is real that will be representing virtual just will be creating that will be supporting these real inventories. Okay, that you don't need to add okay. under this. That is just for system requirement, not business requirement. Here we are representing only business requirement. Okay. Yeah. Regarding this business group, that's going to be the same for all countries, or it's going to be a different naming convention for each country. See, for since it's India, I written India Business Group. If it is USA, you'll be writing ARPT USA Business Group. For UAE, ARPT UAE Business Group. Okay, since the country is specific, the country name you can include in that. If company is doing the business only in one country, there is no need of specifying country name also. So country is uh, company is doing the business only in India. I don't need to segregate any data with the country specific. So I'll simply say ERPTRI business group. That's all. ERPTRI primary ledger. Uh, when uh, means firstly, uh, as a consultant, uh, we will uh, discuss with a client. They will told us and we'll design all these things. So. Uh, as per your experience, what is big challenge uh, means like for designing in this part? What is complexity? Properly, you have to understand. Okay, these points, just these three, these elements only. These elements, you have to just get from them whatever we discussed. So, in how many countries? How many business? How many registrations? How many locations? How many? Inventory automation. This data we have to get. Okay, we're done with that. They are telling they are operating the business in five locations. So okay, these are the locations. Now the question here is in Hyderabad, what operations they'll perform? Say they are going to say they'll do the invoicing, they'll do the payment, they'll do the billing, they do the receipt, they do the procurement. They do the receiving. This is what they'll be telling. That means based on this, you have to understand, okay, which departments are going to be based out in Hyderabad. In Hyderabad branch. First, we'll be understanding which departments. Okay, based on this information, you can understand or else simply you can understand which departments. Say so payables department, let, let's call it as AP. And receivables department, ER. This is PO department. And this is inventory department. Okay, in each location, so what are the different business functions they are performing? These we can call as business functions. So the business functions will be performed by specific departments. You have to understand in Hyderabad, what are the business you are operating? What are the departments you have? That you have to make a note. They'll be giving. The each department, what activities they'll be doing? You will be making a note. Then you can start working with the client saying that, okay, tell me what exactly you are doing in accounts payables department. What are the different type of transactional record? In which scenario what? What are the different systems you are using as of now? Okay, these are all questions will be asking the client. This I'll be covering as a part of real time. Now, if I start explaining, it, it goes in a different way. Okay. Real time, what we do, how we yeah, actually approach the client. What what sort of questions will be asking? What documents will be preparing? I'll be covering that. Okay, fine. Yeah, my question was actually: uh, Is this system uh, like uh, provide us if we uh, miss something uh, during this designing, uh, like or implementation? But after some time, uh, like uh, one month or two months, we think, oh, we need something more. So like it's flexible in the system we can add uh, after some time means that point is required like that means something we missed during implementation or designing but we need i got your point see here when you talk about implementation it's properly you have to plan you have to forecast how the changes may come in the business also in future okay so we have to consider all the possible upcoming changes are in the in the in an enterprise structure, 
how it is going to be managed and all these you have to plan and accordingly you have to design but current how you are running that exactly you have to represent into the system with your design so you can design the solution okay later any point of time if you want to extend that solution you can do it but there are few cases where there are some limitations take Bex example as a limitation now you created your operating your chart of accounts with the six segments in future if you need two more segments you cannot do it simply you cannot go and add so that is the reason now we have to plan even if you need six segments will put two more segments as a buffer segments additional in future if required those you can use with those segment names so apart from this yes, rest, yes. Of, rest of all can be extended so now you are running the business in five locations say you created five operating units okay you just acquired different company that can be added into this process or that can be created in the same instance as a separate entity and a separate multi arc structure or else you are running the business now just in five locations and you extended the business for five more locations you can create any time five more operating units then it will become total 10 operating units and you got a separate registration for those five operating units in that case you can create separate legal entity and uh, you can map the legal entities are running under the operating units are running under which legal entity these and all you can extend any time the companies you can extend the legal entities you can extend the operating units inventory organization everything out of entire implementation the primary thing which you have to focus is chart of account your chart of accounts can decide whether implementation is succeeded or failed that's it that much important the chart of account is okay chart of account you have to be very careful when you are designing and finalizing you have to make sure that that will help now and in the future okay yeah okay yeah yes any other questions please Fine, done. So no questions. So this is just you can go with a different exam uh, uh, examples and you will be you can assume like how this multi arc structure looks like. Hope you got this point. Any clarity you require, please let me know. Any questions from anyone related to multi arc? Any questions from anyone, please? Okay, so this is all about multi arc. What we have to understand now, when it comes to system, when it comes to system, the first point what we have to understand is which applications we are going to implement for our client we have to understand the scope scope is nothing but here which applications we are going to implement for our client so we just plan to see the p2p and o2 cycles in the system where our financial modules will be covered with the full scope so now what we'll do is let's take simple example we got the information okay saying like as a part of implementation we have to implement few modules the application you can call as modules say we have to implement oracle general ledger okay gl okay oracle general ledger oracle accounts payable oracle accounts payable say ap and oracle accounts receivable oracle accounts receivable er okay oracle accounts payables oracle account uh, oracle oracle general ledger oracle accounts payables oracle account receivables and uh, oracle fixed assets 
اف اي سوي اوراكل كاش مانجمنت سي ام او سي سي سوي اوراكل كومون ريسورس كم كواليتاس HRR HRMS HRR HRMS HRMS means Human Resource Management System Human Resource Management System HR includes your employee maintenance and again you can implement payroll process and other employee related other processes also so we have to implement Oracle inventory application INV Oracle purchasing so PO so Oracle order management OM okay so <clears throat> primarily these are the applications we'll just go and create the I mean say simple example so these are the applications okay so these are the applications we are going to implement for the client if you are going to implement these applications for the client what we have to do so for each and every application to act <coughs> To access any application what we have to create in the system to work on any application what we have to create in the system anyone please responsibility responsibility now the first very first point is we have to create the responsibilities for all these applications okay the responsibilities anyone can go and create we may implement only you may work for the project only for financial applications all financial application or else your responsibility may be working on GL and AP only in your project but irrespective of you are going to work on which application implementation simply we can we have to create responsibilities for all the applications which we are going to implement for the client so say first point is you identified you identified the scope of implementation anyway before we start impl with the implementation only our company will come up with this identification okay before they win the project okay before they win that bidding and all so they'll just come to know which modules which applications we have to implement for the client based on our project plan we'll come to know which applications we have to implement so based on that information we have to create the responsibilities now we will take the case as we are going to implement these all applications so we have to create the responsibilities for all these applications so when you are working in real time we will be using the fresh instance fresh instance in case of fresh instance we will have one username and password what is the username we will have in the fresh instance is admin so <clears throat> the first point is okay we have to create the responsibilities to create the responsibilities you have to access the system as a sysadmin user so log into fresh instance as this admin admin user that's the first point then from where we can create the responsibilities within the system already we have seen from where from where we can create the responsibility system, system admin responsibility 
from system administrator responsibility or you can say system administrator application also okay from system administrator responsibility you can create that means so first you log into the system fresh instance as a sysadmin user then you'll go to system administrator responsibility from there we'll create the responsibilities we have to create the responsibilities for all these applications first step is login as a sysadmin user when you are working in real time what are the instance we get from oracle for your client you never find any other users like operations or any other users which you are able to see here because we are using the vision instance within that we have a sample data including sample users but when you are working in real time you'll have a user called a sysadmin that's all the first step is we have to log into the instance fresh instance as sysadmin user then second step is create required responsibilities your required responsibility means which applications you are going to implement for your client for all the applications you have to create the responsibilities after creating the responsibilities okay third point you can say set profile option after setting the profile option as a fourth step you can create user your own user you can create as a fifth step assign okay assign all responsibilities to user and that's how we'll just continue okay there are many steps which we will be executing we'll go one by one first we'll complete these steps so this is a sequence of task will be performing when you are working in real time first you have to you have to access the system as a sysadmin user then we'll be creating the responsibilities for which modules you are going to do the implementation then we'll set profile option which profile option will be discussing then we'll create our own user we'll assign all those responsibility to our user any questions here please hello yeah uh, so you, you second step to create the required responsibility so even though we are pertaining to finance particular module so are we liable to uh, create all the responsibility within the system yes Nice. You'll be able to create. This is a simple task. You should be aware of it. No, no, I'm not talking about. Yeah, but here is it our responsibility, financial consultant yeah. responsibility, to create all the respons uh, responsibility? That's what. That's what. It's it's a very generic task. It's a very generic task. Okay, so we no need mm -hmm. to look at here responsibility. In some implementations, you can see all the responsibilities can be created by SCM consultant, supply chain management consultant. Okay, in other implementation, you can okay. see all will be created by finance consultant. In the other implementation, you can see all can be created by HRMS consultant. Because here, you don't need to look at the responsibility because each responsibility creation, it won't take more than one minute. It's only the point of, point you have to consider whether you know how to create it or not. Okay. Okay. You are working as finance consultant. Okay. You don't know how to create purchasing inventory order management then you can request you can inform them i created finance responsibilities you please create scm responsibilities they'll just think okay that is a level of knowledge you have okay okay, okay. Right. so Thanks. anyone can create but implementation you should you will be i mean you you'll be working on your applications only so the responsibility simple task so we'll be when we are working as finance consultant, we'll have we'll be taking the responsibility to work on our applications only. Other applications responsibilities we can create, but we cannot implement. Okay, so that is a big task again. That should be done by that relevant consultants only. These modules will be implemented by HRMS consultant. These applications will be implemented by a CM consultant. But all these responsibilities anyone can create who is aware how to create, what menu we have to use, what request group we have to use, what need to be provided as a part of the exact 
responsibility creation okay fine so now we'll connect to the instance as a sysadmin user we'll log into the system as a sysadmin user from that user you can connect to responsibility call a system administrator from system administrator responsibility you will be able to create how many responsibilities you required as per your client uh, implementation requirement okay we'll just look into that fine we'll just connect to our instance any other questions here please So we have to log into the system as a certain user. Just click on login. Username is sysadmin. Password also by default will get sysadmin only. If it is not working in your case when you are working, just will contact the DBA. Otherwise, you may con you may check with your team members. Saying that you are trying to log in with the sysadmin user, the password is not working with the same name as this is admin okay what is the password for this user you may check with other team members even if they are not aware only the point is we'll be checking with a dba not with our manager or someone else not required <coughs> done so since this is a vision instance you could see many responsibilities are associated with this admin user also but reality Okay, you'll see very few responsibilities. There will be some technical responsibilities and other responsibilities. So we don't need to worry about all those. Only the point is, first you have to log into the instance as a certain user. And for that certain user, you could you can see system administrator is already associated. You have to go to system administrator responsibility. Just expand this. And click on any one of the function. It will open the system administrator responsibility in the form based environment which you could see everything in the navigator just click on any one of the function any function you can select okay the first task we completed we connected as a certain user and we are in system administrator responsibility what is the second step we have to create the responsibilities for all the applications anyone please tell me what is the serial menu for gl Who are preparing they can answer what is serial menu for gl so really the preparation how much time you are spending for this course is really very important please general legend uh, vision operation us see try to understand my question oracle general my question is okay what is the seeded menu for GL? Discussed. Menu. Yeah. Anyone, please? GL super user. That's it. That's it. That at least you should remember that. Okay. GL super user. At the time of GL responsibility creation, we just used it. Okay. GL super user is menu for gl application in the same way for all these applications we'll have a menus for gl we have a gl super user when you see that creation you'll see gl underscore super user but we don't call as gl underscore super user simply we'll say gl super user that, that is a name instead of giving the space between gl super user they just filled with the gap with underscore so that that would be having some readability otherwise so if you write like this you may understand but somebody as a first time if they are going to see they cannot read it so gl super user so what we can have within the gl super user what we have within the gl super user anyone GL responsibility. 
see my just question is within the gl super user what we have this is a menu sub menu sub yeah. menus we have and functions yeah. that's it that's it we have sub menus and functions so what we have in the gl super user means we have all the gl related features which are managed by sub menus we discussed as a function the same way so what are the features oracle developed for oracle general ledger application those are all they are giving within this gl super user the same way when you are going to work on oracle accounts payables application for the payables also they created one menu for receivables also they created a menu if you just look at payables menu within the payables menu we'll have all the sub menus and functions finally you will find all the payables features within the payables menu for each and every application oracle is providing one menu which consists of that application related functionalities or features so those only we call as seeded menus so for gl the seeded menu already we have seen that is gl super user at the time of responsibility creation okay so see one point is here to be frank you should be able to answer okay whatever we discussed in the previous sessions if i'm asking some question now if you are able to answer that's really good if you are not able to answer if you are able to understand the sessions that's totally different okay because day by day we'll be keep adding lot of information related to this learning so if you are not ready with the prior information whatever we covered it will be big challenge also to understand what i am going to explain whatever i speak that will uh, have a, some connectivity with the prior discussions most of the time so if you are not preparing but if you are attending regular sessions every session you are attending if you don't have a proper preparation means what are the points we are discussing we have to read multiple times till you remember if somebody is going to ask you the question immediately you should be able to answer up to that level you should get ready with this information the same way system also okay if i ask you the navigation what is the navigation to create the segment values anyone can answer to this question please what is the navigation to create the segment values uh, is set up financial uh, financial flex field uh key and uh, segment then segment value no 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 segment segment value is not set up financial flex field key values flex field key okay so who tried that's really great but if you are able to give the exact answer that will help you lot okay just only my the point what i'm trying to highlight is spend more time what are the points we are discussing now read it multiple times in the same way the system practice also try to do multiple times as a part of this course just i'll be creating only one definition but for your practice you may create two three primary ledgers two three calendars two three chart of accounts two three primary ledgers two three legal entities two three responsibilities two three users then you will get some command on that system related process and remember each and every navigation which you are following okay just you should remember everything theoretically what we are discussing and practically what we are doing in the system you should make a note and you have to read and you have to remember and you should be able to explain if you know everything if you are just you are just lacking with the presentation again that will become issue you should be able to explain so that sort of preparation is required for this okay anyway done so for each application for each application oracle is providing the separate menus those we call as seeded menus so now we'll go and create the responsibilities for all these applications okay fine so we'll go one by one we'll follow the sequence okay any questions please okay before we start with this activity or say task responsibilities creation for all the applications all means your few whatever we listed any questions from anyone please fine seems no questions we can start with this responsibilities creation what is the navigation to create the responsibility 
security responsibility defined that's all security responsibility defined so navigation is security responsibility defined take this navigation and we'll create all the responsibilities whatever you require so here <coughs> we'll go with the name called as cloud i'll use the company name as a cloud so whatever we are going to create we'll use the prefix as a cloud So first we'll create GL responsibility. I'll just take the name as cloud general ledger. So when we are creating the responsibility with the seeded menu, which will have a access to complete functionality of particular mod application, the name you can represent as a manager or you can represent as a super user normally the manager for managers whatever the responsibilities we create will be just naming as a super user responsibility super user responsible means which responsibility has complete access to particular application now when we are working as implementation consultants for any client we need responsibility which will have a full privileges to the entire application related functionality for that reason we'll be creating the responsibility with a full access when you have a response to the full access simply you can name it as super user responsibility or manager responsibility we don't write as a consultant responsibility okay cloud general ledger super user okay i'm just giving the name as cloud general ledger super user i'm taking the cloud as a company name application general ledger you just you can type tab out it will fetch responsibility key i'll say cloud i'm, I'm sorry to disturb you yeah please already we created evs erp tree general ledger manager right yes again we are uh, creating now why so that just for our understanding we created now we are following the actual process Okay, how the implementation takes place. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And that ignore it. Ignore. Just already we gone through the process. We got some information. So just it's all about introducing okay. how things happens. Responsibility creation, user, general creation, calendar, chart of accounts, primary ledger, legal entities. Now we are starting with the actual process. That's what uh, just we discussed. First, we'll understand the business requirements. How many we have to create. This is the first step. In the fresh instance when you are working this is the process will be following not what earlier we followed the okay. sequence but activities will be same okay this would be the first step. Okay. thank you thank you yeah when you do the implementation oh. thank you so responsibility key i'm giving as cloud gl it's nothing but short name and here data group okay data group i'll do one thing so we'll try to understand the relation between this menu data group and the request group so we'll just find out we'll create our own responsibilities for all these applications before that we'll just look at what are the responsibility we created and what purpose we given data group menu request group i'll just talk on that so so that we'll get some understanding what and how those logic will work and then for all the responsibilities why we are giving that information we'll have a understanding on that so we created this responsibility here we given which details sorry here we given menu name right okay menu we given and data group data group we given request group we given okay what is the use of menu 
menu consists of sub menus within sub menus we'll have a functions so to work on any ap application okay through responsibility okay to have access to specific functionality will be given the menu okay response here menu means menu consists of application access those functions can be organized with sub menus or those can be direct functions so through menu we'll get access to application means simply you can say forms here form means you can say journal creation is can be done through one form so multiple forms access can be available within the menu okay so we are giving the menu in our responsibility when you have a when you provide the menu within the responsibility through that menu you can have access to okay you can have access to specific forms within those forms you will enter some data where the data has to be stored see here what are the database oracle is providing that we call as oracle standard database standard database within the database there will be segregation to maintain the data within the database will have a segregation to maintain ap data will be separate maintained separately ar data cm data fa data gl data po data om data okay hrms data and inventory data this is how within the standard database within the standard database <coughs> in the standard database will be having some segregation and there will maintain the data technically that we call as a schema okay within the database will have a schemas each schema will represent particular application so for ap will have ap schema so ap data will be stored within that ap schema only so now by using by using menu will have access to forms so when enter the data in the form that has to be stored in the database or not yes we have to store otherwise there is no use of entering the data into form so when we enter the data into forms with the help of menu which is there in the responsibility the data need to be stored in the database the data should be stored in which database that you have to specify here we are giving the specification by using this menu if somebody is going to record any transactions or anything they are going to enter in the system through this responsibility whenever you go to this responsibility within this menu whatever you have this responsibility navigator you can see by using any one of the form which is available within this menu if you enter some data the data has to be stored in the which database standard database within the standard database in which schema that data has to be stored in general ledger why we are selecting general ledger responsibility we are creating for general ledger and this menu is related to general ledger so gl data should be stored within the standard database the data area which is allocated for general ledger only. okay that means it's all about through menu we are giving access to forms with the data group we are specifying through the forms what are the data user is going to enter that has to be stored in which database again within that standard database in which areas of the application that has to be stored what menu we are giving the menu is belongs to gl so the data group application name also will be giving as a general ledger so that's the meaning of menu under data group okay with the menu you can record enter the data into system with the help of responsibility and the data group is nothing but the specification of where the data need to be stored so that here standard means that is a data group name technically speaking data group is related to database only here for a functional point of view simply you can say data group always represents database name here standard database okay so when you enter the data by using the menu it's a mandatory you have to store the data in the database otherwise no use that is the reason the menu undo data group are mandatory okay by using the menu you are entering the data that will go and store in this database whatever the data is getting stored in the database if you want to see the data by running the reports we'll use the request group we'll use the request group within the request group we'll have a reports 
within the menu we'll have a forms data group to specify the database in which database the data has to be stored request group consists of reports reports under some programs also so we created okay we created calendar and when we were trying to close system was triggering some request all those requests will be part of the request group only okay now through menu whatever within the responsibility what are the menu we are giving within that menu what we have we are able we were able to see that and data group we don't see just it's all about specification request group reports we'll just look into these points one by one okay so menu is gl super user data group is gl content program group data group is standard we given okay now i'll go to this responsibility okay i'll just close this Okay, just click on this responsibility. Just expand this. Click on any one of the function. So within this navigator, we are able to see the journals, budgets, inquiry, currency, consolidation, reports, setups, others. If you expand any one of the submenus, there are many other submenus and functions. Is all we are getting from where? How we are getting into this responsibility? How we are getting? Hope you can hear me. Menu is uh, attached to the responsibility. Yes. What are the menus available within this EBS, ERP tree, general ledger manager? Within that menu, how many submenus we have? Within the submenus, how many functions we have? All we are able to see. So if I create responsibility without menu, can we see anything here? No. No. Before that, you cannot create because menu is mandatory. When we are creating the responsibility, menu is mandatory. Without menu, you cannot create any responsibility. Even if you create, there is no use. But of course, we cannot create, but just I'm taking the case for our discussion. So when you are creating the responsibility, the primary purpose is to access application related functionality, which is grouped and maintained in the form of submenus and main menu. For general ledger application, main menu is GL super user, which is seeded menu, which is provided by Oracle. Fine. So within the same responsibility, we given the request group name, right? Okay, we given the request group name. What is the request group name for general ledger responsibility? We given GL concurrent group program group. GL concurrent program group. What it consists of? Reports. Reports. Okay. So that GL concurrent program group, we selected for this responsibility only, right? That means from this responsibility, we should be able to see what are the reports and the programs we have within that responsibility. Okay. So how to see? Go to SRS window. What is the navigation? View request find. View request find. View request Fine. Fine. So if you want to see which reports and programs we have as a part of this GL concurrent program group request group, which is assigned to this responsibility, you have to click on submit a new request. Click on this. Just say OK. You don't need to change anything. These points will be understanding for the request, single request are requested. Just for now, what you can do is Take the navigation, click on submit a new request, then say OK. 
just click on elbow so whatever the reports and programs we have within that request group all you will be able to see here see how many we have many we have can we go and remove the request group from the responsibility can we go and remove the request group from the responsibility yes. why yes we can yes it is not mandatory it's not it mandatory. mandatory so now we'll go and do remove it why menu and do request uh, why menu and data group are mandatory and request group is optional menu and do because uh, yeah. a responsibility may or may not contain yeah a responsibility may or may not contain the reports or programs but uh, uh, every every key in information should go into a database so data group is mandatory that's it that is the point so whatever you enter that has to be stored that is the reason to enter menu is required to store the database specific is required but who are creating the transaction they may not require to run the reports they may not have a responsibility in the company to generate the reports if the same user who has access to specific responsibility if they need access to reports will provide the request group otherwise will remove which users required access to reports for those users related responsibilities only will provide the request group we'll go to system administrator just close it so now go to our responsibility security responsibility define so click on find EBS ERPT general ledger manager I'm going to remove this okay now we'll just go on to access our responsibility I'll just sign out from this user. Username is EBS ERPT. So menu we have asked is so you can see everything how we were able to see earlier. Now you can go to SRS window also, but it would be empty. Click on LOV, nothing. List of values contains no entries. Okay. Okay, now what are the menu undo request group we are discussing? We'll go and open that menu and request group, we'll see what exactly it consists of directly okay so we'll i'll be covering how to create the custom menu custom request group going forward for now just try to understand okay how to verify in specific menu what are the sub menus and functions we have and in specific request group what are the reports and programs we have okay we'll see that close this so when you are working in the real time you don't find operations user so always will log in as a sysadmin user till you go and create your own user go to system administrator responsibility Just open that responsibility by clicking on any one of the function if 
fine now say we want to see within gl super user what have we discussed because of gl super user menu only we are able to see all those sub menus and functions from the particular responsibility we need clarification on that we want to see the proof so if you want to check what sub menus and functions we have in the particular menu take this navigation from the system administrator okay take this navigation we are going to verify that menu we are going to check that so go to application and the function name is menu from system administrator you can just look into specific menu what menu consists of directly you can see from here application menu so what is our menu we are talking about gl super user just if you know the name you can uh, go with the query mode and you can type the name and you can execute or else the simple process is click on find gl underscore super user here you can type that gl underscore super user search the first one right select see now you can see inside of gl super user what we have we are able to see here within the gl super user what we have this is what the prompts only we were able to see from the navigator journals budgets inquiry currency consolidation reports and all so these are we call we are calling as sub menus these are the actual sub menus for that this is a display name given okay if you expand gl setups it will display many sub menus right again this is one sub menu if you expand this it will open many sub menus now here you can go with this sub menu here you can select this sub menu here within the sub menu what are the other sub menus and functions we have you will be able to see okay within this we have all these sub menus i want to open this setup sub menu i want to open the setup sub menu so if i want to open this setup sub menu what i'll do is i'll just i'll <coughs> copy this name i'll click on find i'll search for that gl su su means sub menu setup select it within that what we have you can see okay when you just click on setup it shows financials right when you expand financials it shows other option those if you want to see within this sub menu those will be available you copy this like again just place cursor here and you can search with that name inside of that financials what we have you can see we'll have a flex fields and calendars and all again if you expand for, this is sub menu if you expand that within the flex field you'll have a key segment values all those right so that's how you can see so this is how you can verify in particular menu what sub menus we have within the sub menu what other sub menus or functions we have any questions here please when you do the implementation we have to create many menus which we call as custom menus so whatever oracle is providing that will have access to all the functions all the features of particular application but when you talk about user say for example you, you implemented payables in payables say there are uh, 20 users who are going to work on the payables process so five users required access to only invoicing process five users for payment three users for invoice and payment and two users only for supplier creation okay this is how you will be having the different requirements whatever oracle is providing the menu for payables if you are going to use that will give access to everything but as per user requirement we have to create the menus those menus will be using in our responsibility that's how we'll be creating that any anyway, we will be covering after some time when we are working on payables i'll go with that case and we'll be executing in the system we'll create separate menus 
and responsibility will be creating will be including those custom menus what are the new menus we create those we call as custom menus so we'll be discussing those points any questions here please okay this gl super user menu consists of all these sub menus any questions here please fine no questions so now we look at the request group also so what is the request group we are using gl concrete program group so if you want to verify in specific request group what are the reports we have you can see with this navigation the navigation from the system administrator is security responsibility request so from here you can look into what are the reports and programs we have as a part of request group navigation is security responsibility request okay here you can provide the request group name just you can find out click on search just provide the name what we are using gl concurrent we'll give percentage system will fetch it search the first one see the same gl concurrent program group consists of all these programs okay the program can be so when you say program the program can be related to report or just it may have certain process to just related to data simple point you can take as of now report going forward you can understand the programs also what is the purpose all you will be understanding okay request group consists of reports you can say simply so these all are the reports so many reports we have say for example we have one user will be working on gl for that user we need only five reports so in that case what we'll do we'll create the separate request group separate request group that also will be covering is a part of tables when you're working on tables i'll go with these cases you can understand how to create our own request group and how to take into the process you will be able to understand okay so this is how just you can verify the menus and request groups what those consist of and as per our requirement we'll be creating our own menus and request groups and responsibilities any questions on this please Wait, no questions So, excuse me. Yep. Uh, when you are creating responsibility, uh, when you are creating responsibility on the time, uh, we should give the uh, request group. It is a mandatory or not? You tell me, like mandatory or not? Yeah, I. Uh, so that's why I just want to mm -hmm. confirm whether it is. Uh, just complete. Uh, it seems, task it seems to be. It is checking with you. It's a mandatory or optional. It's a mandatory, but, uh, not mandatory. but uh, there is a yellow column. It is not showing. That's what it's not mandatory. Sorry? Yellow co yellow color it field is not yellow color. The meaning is optional. Okay. Right. That's what we discussed the very beginning uh, sessions at the time of uh, period type creation. The field is in yellow color. Yeah. Okay. That is a mandatory field. White color optional. That is the reason we were able to remove also, right? In the current responsibility, we don't have a request group. For our testing and understanding, the same I did, right? I just removed it. When you go to the SRS okay. window, okay. you are not able to see any reports. Reason, no request group is associated with our responsibility. Fine. Okay. 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 Thank you. Yeah, thanks. So, now we'll go and create the responsibilities. It won't take much time. 5 to 10 minutes we'll be able to create all those responsibilities just will complete this and we'll wind up the session for today fine so navigation is security responsibility defined 
so responsible name i'll give as a just cloud general ledger super user we can write a super user since this responsibility will have full access for gl application so this responsibility we are creating against which application general ledger responsibility key always key enter in the uppercase cloud underscore gl here what is the menu name for gl seated menu gl super user and this menu related data should be stored in which database standard within the standard database in which schema or say in which application general ledger only because general ledger related data should be stored in the database the area which is allocated for general ledger only request group is optional you can save it not required if you don't want any access to reports if you think you need access you can specify but for our understanding we'll provide the request group also for all the responsibilities gl concurrent just type this and tab out it will fetch automatically the first one Okay, what are the menu exclusions and all will going forward will be will be understanding. So just let's see how to create the responsibility. We created this. Okay. And these also just you no need to focus on that. However, we have we are just creating. That's it. We'll we'll talk on this. Oracle application, self-service web application, mobile application. We'll talk on that. Okay. Then we created responsibility for GL by following the same process by using the respective menu under request group will be creating the responsibility for remaining applications just five minutes we can finish okay now to create the new responsibility okay click on new already we saved this responsibility definition now just click on new here we can give the name as cloud accounts payable super user application is we are creating this responsibility to have access to payables. Select payables. Responsibility keys. It's a short name for responsible cloud API call. So for any responsibility, data group name will be same. So any responsibility related data should be stored in standard database only. Here there won't be any change. For all responsibility standard. And the responsibility you are creating for which application, that application name you can select. It's for payables. And for GL, we have a seeded menu called a GL super user. In the same way, for each and every application, Oracle is providing the seeded menu. For payables application, the seeded menu which Oracle provides is AP Navigate GUI 1 2. AP underscore Navigate GUI 1 2. Just tab out, it will fetch automatically. Okay, it's so not taking navigate GUI one two navigate underscore GUI one two. So this menu consists of all AP related features. Okay, for accounts payables, accounts payables relate, related all the reports we have in the request group called as all reports. There is a request group called as all reports within that will have a all ap related reports just tab out the same name we have for many applications but we'll be selecting this is for payables all reports for which application payables right you select request report group request group name is all reports but that is for payables you select this combination so then system will select which request group consists of all the reports related to payables it will select how we are creating the payables responsibility we are giving the responsible name application as payables provide short name data group is same for all the responsibilities standard only based on the responsibility you can provide the application name for every application we have a separate seeded menu for payables we have a seeded menu called as ap navigate gui 1 2 and request group for payables is all reports application is payables since that is for payables just save it you should remember all the menus and request groups okay so tomorrow if there is some question what is the menu for ap you should be able to answer ap navigate gui one two five we'll create for receivables place cursor in the responsible name field then click on new you can say cloud 
accounts receivable. Super user. Application name is receivables. Responsibility key is a cloud air. Sorry. Data group is always standard. Responsibility for receivables. Menu is air navigate. Okay, air navigate GUI. GUI stands for graphical user interface. Whatever you see, that is a because of graphical user interface. That means it means it will give the access to air related forms. Okay, for receivables, request group name is receivables all. Receivables all. This consists of all receivables related reports. Okay, just make a note. Everything remains same. Only menu under request group will keep changing based on the responsibility we are creating for specific application. Just save it. Okay, menu name is Air Navigate GUI. Request group name is Receivable Solve. Fine. Then just click on New. We'll create the responsibility for cash management. Say Cloud Cash Management Super User. Application is Cash Management. Responsibility key is Cloud. CMR, you can say CE. Data group name is standard. Application name is cash management. So here menu name. So already discussed just here C, CM means cash management, but we have separate application called as cost management also. In case of cost management also, we have to take the same short name as a CM. So for that reason, for cash management, menu name they given as a CE. Let us place cursor. C underscore super user. So for cash management, to have access to cash management related functionality. So we have a C super user. This consists of all CM related features. Request group is all reports only. All reports for which application that you have to select cash management. All reports application is cash management. Select it. Then save it. I will just place cursor here. Okay. Menu is CE super user and request group is all reports only. But you should notice all reports we given for AP also. But for AP we selected payables for all reports for cash management. We selected cash management combination. Fine. Just place the cursor in the response name field and click on new. Now we'll create for fixed assets. Cloud fixed assets super user. The application name is assets. Nothing but fixed assets. The responsibility key is cloud FA. Data group is standard. Application is assets. For to have access to entire fixed assets functionality, which is developed by Oracle. So you have a menu called as FA main. And request group is all reports. All reports application is assets. Now we create a responsibility for our finance. Now we'll go with other applications will create the responsibility for HRMS. Just click on new cloud human resources super user application is human resources because this responsibility we require to create the employees when we are working on these processes we require employees information. Okay, in fact, uh, the business group, operating units, inventory organization, everything will be able to create from this responsibility only. That means from this application only. Right. So responsibility keys, cloud, you can say HR or HRMS. Data group is standard. Application is human resource. 
and menu so menu you can take here HR you can go with the India for every country okay they will be providing the separate menu that you can select India HR HRMS navigator okay and here request group also say IN IN HRMS reports and processes this is a request group which you have to use for so uh, HRMS application so since we are going to go with the case for India we are going to take example everything for India operations so I am selecting India related only here IN means India if you are going to do for US here you can go with the US here it would be like US and HRMS navigator and you have a common navigator also which can be used for any country but there won't be any country specification but in our case we are not going to do HRMS implementation so you can just select uh, this India or some other HRMS navigator which is a very generic one but anyway we are going with India so let's select India HRMS if it is US you can select here US US HRMS navigator the, here also it would be US HRMS reports and process that's all save it place cursor here then click on new we will create the responsibility for inventory say cloud inventory so for user application is inventory responsibility key is cloud INV data group is standard application is inventory and uh, menu name here INV navigate okay INV navigate and request group is so here we'll have a all inclusive all we'll have with inclusive term so all inclusive GUI okay this consists of all inventory related reports okay just make a note all these points so primarily menu name and request group rest all will remain same depending on for which application we are creating responsibility accordingly we will provide the naming convention okay fine we created responsibility for inventory now we'll create for purchasing just select place cursor in the responsibility name field and click on new then say cloud purchasing super user application is purchasing so cloud PO purchasing this will represent in the short name as a PO standard menu standard uh, database that nothing but data group application is purchasing and uh, here menu name <coughs> purchasing just you can search with the purchasing you can find okay purchasing super user GUI this is a seeded menu for purchasing which will consist of all the features request copies all reports only All reports for purchasing okay, create it save it okay just you have to remember menu and do request group purchasing super user GUI request group name is all reports I'll just place the cursor click on new now we'll create for order management so cloud order management super user application is order management responsibility keys cloud OM okay so data group name is standard the application is order management 
and the menu name is it's like ADS OM super menu so if you have the ADS they given because order management got connected with many processes advanced pricing distributions operation management all this process will be managed will get connected with OM through OM we have many functions so they're given the naming convention like that so just remember and select it and here request group to have access to OM related reports we have request group it starts with the OM OM concurrent programs save it that's all we created all required responsibilities any questions please any questions from anyone please okay just we completed first step that's all so when we have when we are a part of implementation when you get instance access you have to log in as a sysadmin user and you have to create all the responsibilities for which application you are going to implement as per your client business requirement so these applications we are going to implement so for that for each application we created separate responsibility okay as we completed in the next session we'll see what are the profile option we have to set and user creation assigning all the response to that user the rest will go with the multi org related definitions business group creation or primary ledger creation legal entity creation operating units inventory organizations okay all will create in the sequence by just will discuss and will create wherever some further understanding is required we'll discuss and we'll be working on so any questions based on today's session or previous sessions please one point is very important you have to spend time you may be busy but if you are not going to spend just if you are going to attend the sessions you don't get any advantage out of this you have to spend enough time so you have to practice multiple times whatever we are discussing you have to read and remember that's very very important so any questions from anyone please uh, actually I have some problem with accessing instance uh, I need some uh, means technical guys they can uh, advise me actually it's working from my home but in my office some problem with LAN connection right it was just actually accessing my LAN but it will uh, uh, move to go in net so I uh, means need some technical help how can I uh, you, you cannot do that. I think uh, in your company they have uh, their local network and they will have uh, certain restrictions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I have my admin. I was talking. Uh, we will do all possible things. Will Google do you? But uh, actually, uh, I was failed. So if uh, your guys know, they can from our side, nothing. There is no point to work on it. So we given the access. So from which network? okay which the company network or your private network from where you are accessing that we have to get privileges where any system can be accessed from that network that's it if it's a registration from your company normally they don't allow you okay right. so we give an access it's a public access in your company if they have certain restrictions not to allow that uh, from our side we cannot do anything Okay, generally, even if you request, they don't do it. Generally, if you have a, some option, you may try with that. But from our side, there is no option to do anything. We given full access. Wherever no restrictions, from there you can access. If the you have, from your end, if some restrictions, that you have to get clear with the people help who can help you on that. Fine. Any other questions, please? So if no questions, that's all for today. We'll connect tomorrow same time and we'll continue from here. Okay, thank you all. Have a good day and good night.